Hi, I'm Carl and I'm the designer of Kelp. I'm going to show you how to play a little bit, give you a bit of a basic overview of the game. It's set up right now in the middle of the game, so you see things are a little bit different from the starting setup, but I'll tell you how it plays. Well, Kelp is a two-player asymmetrical game about an octopus and a shark. The octopus is trying to survive while the shark is hunting it. And in this game, players are doing very different things from each other. The octopus player is using cards to manipulate their blocks, move them around on the board, trying to survive and stay hidden. And the shark, meanwhile, is using dice, swimming around the board, trying to find the octopus and attack it at the right moment. I'm gonna give you a bit of an overview first of the, of the octopus side, then we'll come back to the shark side and I'll show you how that works, and then we'll wrap things up at the end. So the octopus is hiding out one of these blocks on the board. There's this one, of course. And as you can see, these blocks are one-sided. That means that uh, only the octopus player who's sitting on this side of the table, only they can see where the octopus is hiding. The shark, meanwhile, is just seeing the backs of all these blocks. So they don't know where the octopus is hiding at the start of the game. And so the octopus player, they're gonna be playing cards. And on their turn, they've got two actions. For their actions, they can play a card and do the action, whatever that says. Or they can just discard a card here without using its effect to hide one of their blocks. We'll find out why they're revealed a little bit later. Uh, or if they, if they wish, or if they have to, use one of their actions to draw back up to their hand size. So let's talk a little bit more about playing a card. Well, every time the octopus player plays a card, they put it in one of these slots, and then they pay the reveal cost. You see, there is a consequence for playing cards. Here on the card is the reveal cost. In this case, to play this card, the octopus must reveal one of their blocks to the shark. So for example, they just show a shell like this. They then complete the effect. This is a learning effect. So this is the way that you can improve your cards and your blocks throughout the game and get better at, better at the different skills of survival. So this says learn two. So they could learn two cards, for example. That means take cards and put them in their discard pile and they're gonna have access to them later. Or they could learn two blocks, uh, which could mean they get an extra new trap in play. It's gonna make life difficult for the shark. Or they could learn a card and a block. In the case of food, and I'll explain what food is later, they get both. So let's talk about some of the cards. What are the kind of things that you can do on your turn? Well, you can learn, as I said, which means gaining new cards and new blocks, improving your abilities. You can move your pieces, of course. And there's two different ways to move, by shuffling your blocks and swapping your blocks. Shuffling your blocks means to take two hidden blocks on the board. So I take, for example, this one and this one, throw them in the bag, shake them around, and then the octopus player takes them out without the shark seeing them. And the shark player chooses where they go on the board. This means it's random for both the shark and the octopus. You could end up back where, exactly where you started. Maybe not, but the shark doesn't know that. Are they correct? Nailed it. There's also swapping your pieces. Swapping means that you know exactly where they go, but of course, the shark can also track them. So swapping is to swap two adjacent blocks. So for example, I could swap this one and this one. And it doesn't matter if they're hidden or revealed when you do that. Of course, you might have realized by now, if you keep playing cards and revealing your blocks, the shark is gonna know pretty quickly where you are. So that's where hide cards come in play. Basically, you play a hide card, it has no reveal cost, of course, and it usually means you can hide some of your blocks again. And the final card that's available in the game, those are eat cards. Eat cards go hand in hand with a block of food. And when you buy them, as I said, they both go into play. So the card goes into your discard pile usually, and the block goes in play. And later on, when you play that card for one of your actions, as long as you're adjacent to the food, of course, the octopus is adjacent to the food, and you reveal both pieces, that's the catch, then you can eat the food. And that means you're one step closer to victory because as the octopus player, if you can shoot the moon and eat all four blocks of food, you win the game immediately. But because you've got to reveal the octopus to do it, it's pretty risky to do so. So when you eat the food, you then have access to a one-time special ability. 
And those are the four different card types that the octopus has available. They also have traps that they can put in play. And as I said, those are gonna make life difficult for the, for the shark. And they have a block that makes playing cards a little bit cheaper. And that's a general overview of how the octopus player plays. So now let's look at the shark. In general, the shark is moving around the board, using dice, gaining cards, getting new special abilities, and getting stronger and stronger and stronger through the game. On their turn, they follow a series of steps. First, they start out by drawing and rolling their dice. Then, if they've got access to a re-roll, they can re-roll them, and sometimes re-roll them again. Lovely. And then they move their shark, and the shark is always moving forwards, and moves one space each turn. However, if they've got blue dice, they can use these as currents on the board to move even further. The only thing you need to remember is that the shark is swimming down a chain of currents. That means they can never swim up numbers. And whenever you use a current, you remove the highest dice in the chain, and that goes onto your growth tiles, which ultimately make you stronger. But we'll come back to those later. Then the shark moves to the search or strike step if they have a yellow or a red dice with them. You can use a search dice to reveal one of the blocks next to the shark, as long as the value of the dice is equal to or higher than the visibility value of the zone. So in this case, I need a four or a five or a six to reveal this block. So I'm next to it, I play the dice in the search strike step and reveal that block. If it's a trap, it's usually pretty bad for the shark. If it's the octopus, I haven't caught them yet, I just know where they are. And then I need to use my red dice in future turn to attack them. So let's say we're in a different scenario. The shark, the octopus is hidden, but I've got a good sense of where it is. And I'm able to swim there. Let's say I've got my currents here like this. On my next turn, I swim down here. Let's say I've got a four on my strike dice. I can attack that block. If it's the octopus, oh, 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 we're, in for, we're in for a taste. Used search dice, they also get added to your growth tiles, which helps you get stronger. But the red dice, whether you attack the octopus or you attack, take a bite out of a shell, the red dice, whenever they're used, they go onto your hunger track. And when the final dice is placed on the hunger track, the game is over and the octopus wins. So that's how you use each of the dice. The blue dice can be used for currents, the yellow dice can be used to search, and the red dice can be used to attack. But they can also be used instead for their value. So when they're rolled, for example, I could use this as a three and a six. I could use a three as a current on the board, or the six to search a block. Or instead, I could add a dice, or both dice, to my stored energy here. And this is how I gain new cards and new dice, get them into play. So when I'm using energy, I count up the value of the pips on the dice. In this case, I've got 13 energy to spend, which means I could buy this aggressive card for 10, that's gonna give me two red dice in my bag, but this one doesn't have any effect. Or I could buy the hungry and the agile card for 12, and that's gonna give me a red, a blue, and a yellow, and two abilities to use later on. So there's gonna be some tricky decisions to make. So when I use my energy, I take the cards, gain the new dice, throw them back in, throw them in my bag, but then there's a consequence. Every time I use my energy, I have to move one of the dice that I used to the hunger track, and that moves me ever closer to the end. The other dice go back in my bag, and play continues. The final step of the shark's turn is the growth step. Whenever a tile is complete, with dice, you take those dice, throw them back in the bag, flip the tile over, that special ability is now active for the rest of the game. And so you're gonna gain things like your ability to reroll your dice, improvement to your stored energy, and maybe an opportunity to even draw more dice on your turn. So that's all the steps of the shark player's turn. But there's one last thing to explain, and that's whenever the shark attacks the octopus with a strike dice. The game's not over, the octopus still has one last chance to escape in the final confrontation. Each player has three confrontation cards. The octopus player has survival strategies. Some of them are better than others, depending on the circumstance in the game. And the shark player has strategies to block them. And they're in matching pairs. 
So each player is gonna choose one of these cards and play it face down secretly in front of them. And then they reveal simultaneously. If the colors match, that means the shark has played the correct counter, caught the octopus, and the game is over and the shark wins. If instead they play different colors, that means the octopus has escaped and they're able to complete the effect on the card, but then they remove the matching pair. And that means the next time that the octopus gets caught, it's a 50-50 chance. And if they escape that time, the third time will be 100%. So in summary, the octopus wins by surviving for long enough or by achieving the feat of eating all their food. And the shark player wins by attacking the octopus at the right moment and then outwitting them in the final confrontation. And that's a quick overview of kelp. Hit us up with your questions, leave us a comment, and please follow along on the Kickstarter or check out kelpgame.com. We hope to see you there. Mm -hmm.